Morning everyone, my name is Mike Ewell and I'm an assessment biologist for the Lake Ontario Management Unit of the Ontario Ministry of Northern Development, Mines, Natural Resources and Forestry. I would like to thank the Great Lakes Fisheries Commission and the Lake Ontario Committee for the opportunity to speak to you today about Lake Ontario predators and provide an update on our assessment program for Lake Ontario in 2022. We're going to start with a quick overview of the fish community objectives that I will be speaking to today. I will then walk through specific results on several Lake Ontario predator species, including Chinook salmon, Atlantic salmon, steelhead and rainbow trout, brown trout, and coho salmon. I also wanted to touch on the research priorities identified by the Lake Ontario Predator Prey Working Group and review the 2022 Salmon and Trout Assessment Program. The fish community objectives that I'll be addressing today include Objective 2.1, Maintaining the Chinook Salmon Fishery. The indicators for this objective include maintaining or increasing angler catch rates in both the lake and tributary fisheries, as well as maintaining Chinook average growth and condition to level levels at or above the 2007 values. Objective 2.2, restoring Atlantic salmon populations and fisheries. Indicators include increasing adult returns and wild production in the Credit River, Duffins Creek, Coburg Brook and Humber River in uh, the province of Ontario increasing angler catch rates of wild and stocked fish in the lake and in the Salmon River, New York, and establishing self-sustaining wild populations in the Credit River, Duffins Creek, Cobra Brook, and Humber River in uh, the province of Ontario, as well as the Salmon River in New York. Objective 2.4, maintaining predator-prey balance. The indicator here includes maintaining Chinook average growth and condition to levels at or above those observed in 2007. Objective 2.5, maintain rainbow trout or steelhead fisheries. Maintaining or increasing angler catch rates in both the lake and tributary fisheries. Maintaining or increasing popu the population, recruitment, and growth of rainbow trout in the Salmon River, as well as the Ganarasco River. Objective 2.6, maintain brown trout and coho salmon fisheries. The indicator here is maintaining or increasing angler catch rates in both the lake and tributary fisheries. The fish community objectives speak to our fisheries. As I move through each species, data presented are primarily summarized for the New York State and Ontario open water and tributary creels. There is a lot more information available than I'll be able to cover in my time slot, so I strongly encourage you to visit the Great Lakes Fisheries Commission webpage where you will be able to find links to our most recent published annual reports. This figure shows Chinook catch rates per angler in the open water recreational fishery. Ontario is shown in the black and New York is in the blue. Typically, New York State conducts their creel annually. Both agencies could not conduct a creel in 2020 due to COVID-19 restrictions. The dashed lines represent a previous 10-year average for the catch rate. There's a lot of consistency shown between these two programs. These two red arrows indicate a sharp increase observed in both creels in 2003. And also in the 2017 to 2019 period, Creels observed record high catch rates of Chinook salmon. In 2021 specifically, uh, New York showed the catch per unit effort well below the average for the last 10 years. And it's come down significantly from the record highs observed in that 2017 to 2019 period, but is now more in line with what's observed uh, over the longer term time series. This figure provides a summary of the tributary creel information, specifically around the number of Chinook caught per trip. And gray bars show the average catch across all tributaries, whereas the black dots show the catch rates specifically in the Salmon River. What is shown is a slight decline through the average tributary through time, um, as well as in the Salmon River. In 2019 specifically, the most recent tributary creel, we see an increase in the catch rate in the Salmon River. Here we have the average weight of an age three Chinook. Ontario fish in black are from the Credit River Spawning Survey in October, while the New York fish in blue are from the August open water creel. The dashed line show the 2007 index value that's referenced in our fish community objectives. This index is used to understand how healthy a fish is. Higher values suggest that you are healthier or fatter for your age, while lower values suggest that you are less healthy or skinnier for your age. In more recent years, we've seen an uptick in condition where at this point in the time series, we have met and or exceeded the 2007 value. Moving from Chinook to Atlantic salmon catch rates per angler in the open lake fishery, we have Ontario data represented in the black, New York data in the blue. 
Relative to the other Lake Ontario salmon and trout species, Atlantic salmon catches in the lake are quite low. There was a recent uptick in catch rates experienced in 2019, but they have subsequently dropped in 2021 and are now below both the 10-year average as well as the time series average. In the New York DEC tributary creel, Atlantic salmon catch rates in the Salmon River and Oak Orchard have been relatively low but stable. In the most recent 2019 survey, catch rates were shown to have increased slightly in the Salmon River and notably increased in Oak Orchard. The reason for this increase is currently unknown, but it may be related to shifts in New York stocking strategies. Future tributary creels will determine whether these increases will persist. In the Salmon River, the United States Geological Survey has an electroshocking program to detect wild Atlantic salmon production. In the past 10 years, Atlantic salmon par have been detected four times, 2011, 2013, 2016, and 2019. No fish were detected in 2020 or 2021. The Credit River in Mississauga, Ontario has been identified as a priority restoration stream for the Lake Ontario Atlantic Salmon Restoration Program. One of the targets set in phase three of the program was to observe 200 fish returning to the Credit River. In 2018, Ontario installed a fish counting system in the Streetsville Fishway, approximately 15 kilometers upstream from the lake, to identify and count returning adults. I've included a video here on the right of a fish returning in 2021. Returning adults remain low, with 18 observed in 2019, 15 in 2020, and 49 moving upstream in 2021. Approximately 65 individual fish were observed in 2021, but only 49 were confirmed to have migrated upstream through the fishway. New York DEC has developed a new Lake Ontario Atlantic Salmon Fisheries Management Plan. The plan maintains its focus on the Salmon River and Oak Orchard, but will expand stocking to include Sandy and South Sandy Creeks. Chinook and coho salmon are no longer stocked in Sandy and South Sandy, and this expansion of Atlantic salmon stocking will help support fall and winter fisheries. The NDM and RF have completed phase three of Atlantic salmon restoration program and are currently working with their partners to develop the next five-year plan. Catch rates of steelhead in the open water fishery have been variable in the Ontario creel. Both creels show catch rates have declined slightly over the past 10 years. 2021 showed a modest increase from the previous two creels, moving closer to the previous 10-year average. Steelhead catch rates in the tributary fisheries overall and within the Salmon River specifically experienced the same patterns with high catch rates in 2011 followed by lows in 2015 and an increase in the 2019-2020 creel um, from that previous 2015 value. The spring spawning run on the Ganaraska River has been enumerated since the mid-1970s. This provides an abundance and condition index for our naturalized steelhead population in Lake Ontario. In 2016, the counting system was replaced with the river watcher. You can see the video here on the right. Counts on the Ganaraska River have increased since the recent lows in 2015 and 16. 20, the 2021 estimate was just below 7,000 fish and is in line with the previous 10-year average. Steelhead or rainbow trout condition is shown here as the weight of a 635 millimeter or 25 inch fish. Ontario is in the black and was measured at the Ganaraska River. New York is in the blue, measured at the Salmon River Hatchery. Keep in mind that higher on this figure suggests that you have increased condition and lower on the figure suggests lower condition. Both time series show a slight decline in condition overall throughout the 30 year time series. The absolute difference in weight is approximately 250 to 500 grams. Condition for the Ganaraska River fish was much improved in 2021, exceeding the 10-year average. New York data show stability in their condition values more recently and are just below the previous 10-year average. Moving to brown trout in the open lake fishery, uh, fishing effort and catch rates remain stable but low in the Ontario Creel, represented in the black. Uh, in New York, the blue, brown trout represent the second most popular fish for the New York anglers in the open water fishery. Catch rates have been variable over the past 10 years, but have been following a declining trend since a peak in 2011. Catch rates in 2021 specifically have reached the lowest point in almost 30 years. Coho catch rates have been relatively stable through the time series, with an uptick experienced around 2006, 2010. In 2021, the New York catch rate is above the previous 10-year average and the average for the time series. We wanted to take this opportunity to provide an update on the Coho Mass Market Initiative led by Dr. Connerton of the New York DC. 
This slide just scratches the surface of the information gained from that initiative. So again, I encourage you to seek out our annual reports for more information. As a reminder, in 2016, 17, 18, and 19, all coho salmon stocked by New York and Ontario received an adipose clip. In addition, fish stocked in 2016, 17, and 19 received coated wire tags indicating whether the fish was stocked as a fall fingerling or a spring yearling. The two main results we wanted to highlight included results of life stages as well as wild contribution to the lake population. Spring yearlings experienced higher survival than fall fingerlings. The range observed was 3 to 1 to 12 to 1. In other words, based on the survival estimates, you would have to stock anywhere from 3 to 12 fall fingerlings to equal one spring yearling. The second piece around wild contribution was found that during the study period, wild fish contributed approximately 45% to 70% of the coho catches. This suggests that the number of wild fish in the lake at a minimum equal the number of stocked fish, but could also be up to two times the number of stocked fish. In the last portion of my talk, I want to address some of the research priorities identified by the Lake Ontario Predator Prey Working Group and end with an overview of the 2022 work plan specific to the species addressed in this talk. The Lake Ontario Predator Prey Working Group consists of agency and academic experts that synthesize, interpret, and provide results to the Lake Ontario Committee pertaining to predator prey balance in Lake Ontario. In 2019, the group identified several priority areas for investigation. Two priorities that I will be speaking to today include Chinook population estimates with a specific emphasis on lake-wide age zero production and determining the origin of a fish using natural tagging methods. In other words, figuring out whether a fish is wild or stocked. In 2020 and 2021, with the planning support of fellow working group members, Ontario initiated a pilot fall nearshore trawling program. The program aimed to capture young of year salmon species later in the fall season when they were vulnerable to trawling gear. Initial results show that salmon species were captured along with several other species. This pilot program has laid the foundation for the upcoming efforts in 2022. In 2022, USGS, Ontario and New York DEC will be taking a coordinated approach in conducting and assessing this program. This program will provide an estimate of young of year salmon abundance and biomass for Lake Ontario, which will allow us to have earlier indicators of predatory demand on the system and increase our ability to identify and predict potential predator prey imbalances. In addition, samples collected during this program will contribute to new tools under development that I'll speak to next. The Predator Prey Working Group is currently evaluating two natural tagging methods to help identify the wild contribution to Lake Ontario's predator population. These tools are at different stages of development and implementation. Parentage-based tagging led by Cornell University and New York DEC compares the DNA or genetic profile of a fish caught in the lake or river to a database comprised of all possible mothers used in the hatchery system for Lake Ontario. If there is a genetic match, we know the fish came from a hatchery system and which hatchery. No match means that the fish was naturally produced or is wild. The second technique that we are investigating includes otolith microchemistry. This technique works under the premise that a young fish that has just hatched will absorb the chemical signal or fingerprint of the surrounding water, whether in a river, hatchery, or net pen, and store it in its otolith. This chemical fingerprint creates a baseline for comparison. When an angler catches a fish, we can then extract otoliths and compare its fingerprint to the baseline. A match will tell us whether the fish was stocked or wild and may be able to tell us which river, net pen, or hatchery it came from. These tools will help provide critical information on the variability as well as the dynamic of wild contributions to the Lake Ontario predator population. Lastly, I wanted to provide an overview of the predator assessment program for Lake Ontario this upcoming field season. The purple stars indicate long-term sentinel rivers for salmon and trout assessment in Lake Ontario. The Salmon River, Credit River, and Ganaraska River will be monitored throughout the 2022 season, including spring and fall spawning indices, egg collections, Chinook and Atlantic salmon, young of year saning in the Salmon River, which provides an index of year class strength for wild fish, and ongoing salmon and trout migration assessments in the Credit and Ganaraska rivers using the River Watcher fish counting system. Ontario will be conducting a young of year Chinook survey across the North Shore. Samples collected in this program will contribute to establishing the baseline for otolith microchemistry that I spoke to earlier. We will also be including samples from all New York and Ontario net pens as well as both hatcheries. 
New York DEC will be conducting their open water creel in the spring and summer season. And in 2022, Ontario will also be conducting their creel covering the spring, summer and early fall season. In September, when the open water creel ends, the New York DEC will be starting their tributary creel, which will run from September to April. This covers 21 rivers across the South Shore and runs from essentially the Niagara, Lower Niagara to Black River. Lastly, we have the new fall near shore trawling program that I spoke to earlier. This will help us estimate predator abundance in biomass for Lake Ontario. Samples collected throughout the season will contribute to ongoing development and refinement of genetic and oilith microchemical tools for origin determination. The Predator and Prey Working Group collects, synthesizes, interprets data collected from these programs and those addressed in the talk before me by Dr. O'Malley to understand and describe the predator prey dynamic in Lake Ontario. This information is provided to the Lake Ontario Committee, much the same as I have done today, to inform decisions around predator prey management in the lake. Thanks everyone for your time and your interest in this talk. Again, I strongly encourage you to visit the Great Lakes Fisheries webpage where you can find links to our most recent published annual reports. At this time, I'll take any questions. Thanks again.